Hello students. In this video, we're going to find the solution to an initial value problem. Now, there are a couple ways to solve this ODE. Uh, we're going to choose separation of variables. Um, you could do this by a Bernoulli transformation as well, but um, in this video, we're going to do it by separation of variables. So, first thing we have to decide on here is um, how we're going to separate the equation. Notice that the dependent variable is y, the independent variable I'm going to choose t. Um, you could pick x if you want, but um, because I see the dot over the y, typically y dot um, implies dy over dt. Now um, I'll rewrite the equation that way, dy over dt equals 4y times 4 minus y. And then I'll do the separation. I'll take the information containing the dependent variable and I'll divide it over here to the um, under the dy term, and I'll leave the 4 here by the dt. You could move the 4 over here if you wanted to. I just find it typically easier to leave the 4 here. Now we're going to integrate both sides after doing the separation. And uh, this integration here on the left-hand side um, is going to require a partial fraction decomposition. I'll come back to this and show you where the 1 4 come from. But um, I just wanted to write out what that looks like here on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, it's still going to be the integral of 4 dt. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to factor out the 1 fourth, and I'm going to factor uh, out a minus sign, or if you like, you could think of this as I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by a minus, and then that'll give me, um, I'll distribute the minus sign here, that's why we get a minus 4, minus minus on the y here gives us a plus, and then the minus stays here, the 1 fourth and 1 fourth come out of the integral. Okay. Now the partial fraction decomposition works this way. I have 1 over y times 4 minus y. And um, it's like I want to work backwards with the fractions, right, in the partial fraction decomposition. So here's the common denominator. And here we want to split the fractions rather than finding a common denominator. Um, so um, I use the cover-up method. That means um, I'm going to multiply. I'm going to clear this to fractions. I'm going to multiply everything by y over by y times 4 minus y. And when I do that, on the left-hand side, I get 1. On the right-hand side, multiplying by the y times 4 minus y, the y's here cancel, and I have a times 4 minus y. Here I have um, the 4 minus y's cancel, and I'm left with by. Now the cover-up means that I'm going to, if I want to cover up the a term, I let y be 4. That makes the 0. If the y is 4 here, I have b times 4, which is 4b. And then that equals 1, ergo b equals 1 fourth. Similarly, if I want to cover up the b term, I let y be 0. But if I let y be 0 here, I'm left with a 4. So I have 1 equals 4a. And then likewise, a is 1 fourth. So that's the partial fraction decomposition. Now I'm going to integrate uh, 1 over y, and I get the natural log of y. And I integrate 1 over 4 minus y, and I get the natural log of y minus 4. You can do that by u substitution. You can look that up in the table of integrals, any number of ways. That's a fairly simple integral, I would expect at this point, if you're in differential equations. You should be able to handle that one. I'll integrate 4, and I get 4t plus the arbitrary constant. Yes, this integration has an arbitrary constant as well, but in ODEs, we typically just lump them together into this arbitrary constant on the right-hand side that goes along with the independent variable. Now, I'm going to take that um, 4, 1 fourth, I'm going to multiply both sides by 4, and when I do that, I clear out this fraction here, 4 times 4 is 16, so that's where I get the 16t, and then I have a 4c. I'm going to collapse this natural log, so remember the property of natural logs. The natural log of a quotient is the difference of the logs, or the difference of the logs is the natural log of a quotient. Um, either way, I'm going to collapse this term down to simplify this a little bit, and then I'm going to take the exponential of both sides, the exponential of the log, um, are, the exponential and log are inverse functions, so the exponential of the log here, we'll just bring down the y over y minus 4. Here I have an exponential of a sum, well, in reverse, that's the um, thing, uh, these two have the same base, so I add the exponents, or if I have a base with added exponents, that must have been a product of these two powers. Now, um, 4 times c is arbitrary, so 4 times c is still arbitrary. e to the 4c is e to the arbitrary, so that's still arbitrary. So this is going to be an arbitrary constant, so I'm just going to rename that c1. 
So now my equation looks like y over y minus 4 here equals c1 e to the 16t. All right, now um, I have a choice. I could solve for y and then um, plug in the initial value, but what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to plug the initial value into this form of the equation. So I have y of 0 over y of 0 minus 4. On the one hand, on the other hand, I have c1 times e to the 16 times 0. So now I'm going to simplify that. When I do, y of 0 is 8, that's given to me. y of 0 is 8, that's given to me. And 16 times 0 is 0, so e to the 0 is 1. So c1 times 1 is simply c1. So now I'm left with 8 over 8 minus 4, 8 minus 4 is 4. So 8 over 4 is 2. So that means that c1 is equal to 2. So I'm going to take that 2, and I'm going to put it in for the c1, and I'll get um, the left-hand side is equal to 2 times e to the 16t. Now, I want to solve for y, now that I have my um, arbitrary constant solved for, given by the initial value. So I'm going to multiply both sides by y minus 4. Um, so I'm pushing this y minus 4 to the right-hand side. And then I'm going to distribute the 2 times e to the 16t um, to both terms as I distribute that there. And then um, I'm going to push this 2e to 16ty, I'm going to push it over to the left-hand side. And then I notice that I have a y and a y here. So um, that's a common factor. I have a minus 4 times 2 gives me the minus 8. That's on the right-hand side. So with this common factor, I'm going to pull that common factor out, and I have a y here. There is a 1 sitting here, so that's where that comes from. So I have 1 minus 2 e to the 16t. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 1 minus 2 e to the 16t, and I get this solution here. This is a perfectly fine solution. However, I can simplify that a little bit. So if you're happy with that solution, you can stop the video here. If you want to see a little bit more analysis, um, we'll continue on for another minute. Now, if I multiply the top and the bottom by minus e to the minus 16t, um, e to the minus 16t times e to the 16t, um, we add the exponents because they have the same base, but that becomes a 0 because 16 minus 16 is 0. Likewise, e to the minus 16t times this term is going to make that a 1, and then minus e to the minus 16t is going to go right here, and that'll be a minus e to the minus 16t. So I'm going to move that over here. Remember, this turned to 1 because I distributed that there, and I get a 2 minus that. This became a 1, but the minus and the minus cancel to give me an 8, and I have this form of the equation here. The benefit of this form of the equation is to note that, well, one, it's just simpler than this one. The other thing is, if you notice, as t goes to infinity, this is decaying down to 0. It's exponential decay, so you're left with 8 over 2 minus 0, and uh, 8 over 2 is 4. Now, where do we have we seen that 4 before? Let's go up to the face portrait for this ODE. If you drew the face portrait for this um, ODE, you would have a stable um, equilibrium at 4. And so you notice that as t goes to infinity of y of t, this function, it goes to 4. And that's told you by the face portrait. Um, and that is confirmed by the solution. So that's the one of the benefits of writing it this way. Okay, I hope that you find this video helpful. And good luck.